Is type 2 diabetes a reversible disease? Hold that this is a chronic and progressive disorder. That means that once you develop type 2 diabetes, you're going to have it for life. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to be on medications, you're going to be on insulin, and then you're going to develop the complications. Blindness, nerve damage, amputations, heart attacks, strokes, kidney damage, dialysis. The whole works. It's inevitable. But is it really? Imagine a world where type 2 diabetes is a simple reversible disorder, where a simple dietary maneuver can reverse your diabetes in a matter of weeks. The American Diabetes Association, of course, disagrees. They say, right on their website, that it's a fact that for most people, type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease. So you might as well forget about it. Don't even try to get better. It's hopeless. They're telling you there's no hope. But we can look at certain examples and we can see that this is actually not true at all. Let me give you some of these examples. Bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is also called weight loss surgery or stomach stapling. What they do is they take your stomach and they cut it to the size of a walnut. So you really just can't eat. Because you're not eating, you're going to lose a lot of weight. But what happens to the diabetes? Well, let's look at this study here. In this study, they randomized two groups of people. One group of people stayed on their medications and got the best medical therapy available. The other group got weight loss surgery. On the horizontal axis is time, over 12 months. On the vertical axis is the number of medications that these people were taking. You can see that the number of medications that people took while doing the best medical therapy available really didn't change. They kept taking the same number of medications. They're really no better than they were when they started, than they were at the end. But look at the weight loss surgery group. Very quickly, within a matter of months, they're coming off all their medications, and it keeps going. By 12 months, many of these people are off of all their medications, and their blood sugars are completely normal. That's amazing. Wasn't this a chronic and progressive disorder? Wasn't this a disorder where there's no treatment and there's nothing you can do, it'll get worse? Well, not really, not according to this study. It looks like diabetes is a disease that's reversible, but better than that, it's quickly reversible. And even other types of weight loss surgeries, such as gastric banding, have the same benefits. Gastric banding is a procedure where they put a belt inside your stomach and tighten it so that you can't eat. And again, what you see here is that the diabetes very quickly reverses and it stays gone. So this is not a chronic and progressive disorder. This is a reversible disorder. I'm not saying that ba gastric banding or, or weight loss surgery is the answer for everybody, but it simply points to the fact that the situation is different and this is a reversible disease. Let's look at another example. We can look at fasting. Fasting is a dietary maneuver where you don't eat anything for a certain period of time. I had this patient here, Richard, who came to me for treatment of his diabetes. He had been diabetic for 10 years, he was taking about 70 units of insulin, and he was developing complications. He was getting eye disease, he was getting kidney disease. So we changed his diet, we put him on a low carbohydrate diet, and we gave him some simple tips and we included some intermittent fasting in his regimen. Over a period of months, he lost about 50 pounds. And his diabetes got incredibly better. We took him off all of his insulin, took him off all of his medications, and his blood sugars are normal. Even two years out now, he's still on no medications and his blood sugars are doing amazing. So in fact, this is a reversible disease. Fasting seems to lead to a reversal of his diabetes. And this is not a new finding. In fact, if we go back almost a hundred years, Dr. Elliot Jocelyn, perhaps the most famous diabetes specialist in history, wrote this in the Canadian Medical Journal that temporary periods of undernutrition are helpful in the treatment of diabetes 
will probably be acknowledged by all after these two years of experience with fasting. So what happened was that he had been using fasting for two years and he thought it was so amazingly great that it's going to be obvious. Everybody's going to know this. There were a few problems, of course. At the time, he didn't differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. While it's very beneficial for type 2 diabetes, it really doesn't impact type 1 very much. And with the discovery of insulin a few years later, all focus shifted to insulin, and everybody forgot about these dietary therapies. Recently, in the United Kingdom, Dr. Taylor performed a study called the CounterPoint Study. And there he put people on very low calorie diets. While it's not fasting, it's very close. And look at these results. In this group, the blood sugars went from 9.6 to 5.9 in seven days. Seven days! His sugars have gone back to normal. What happened to this idea that it's chronic, it's progressive, you'll always be on medication? It's simply not true. There's another example we can give. We can look at the example of very low carbohydrate diets, or so-called ketogenic diets. Let me give you a case. I had a 27-year-old graduate student. She was actually studying physiology. And she was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Her hemoglobin A1c was 10.4%. This is a three-month average of her blood sugars. The diagnosis of diabetes happens at 6.5%, so 10.4% is very high. Her doctors were very concerned, of course, started her on three medications right away. Being only 27, she, she didn't want to stay on medications for the rest of her life. So she looked on the internet and decided that she would follow a ketogenic diet. Well, she very quickly lost about 20 pounds, and at her three-month checkup, her hemoglobin A1c was 5.5% well within the normal range, and clearly not diabetic. Better, she had taken herself off of all her medications as soon as she started. So in this case, it looked like her type 2 diabetes was essentially cured. Wow. That's not what we are told, right? But we all know this is true. We all know that the type 2 diabetes is completely reversible. For example, if somebody comes up to you and says, you know what, I lost 50 pounds and my diabetes went away, you'd say, wow, that's great, terrific, good for you. You wouldn't say to them, no, you're lying to me. The American Diabetes Association says it's chronic and progressive. Get back on your medications. No, of course not. So it's immediately obvious that this is just a lie. Type 2 diabetes is not chronic and it's not progressive. It's reversible. But what about all the cases about people on medications? Do you ever hear people say, hmm, I started my insulin or I started my medications and now I'm so much better I took myself off? No, not really. If you take medications, you're generally on it for life, right? Or what about the standard low-fat diet? Nobody ever comes up to me and says, you know, I went to my dietician, I started a low-fat diet, and now I'm so much better, I'm off all my medications. I've seen thousands of patients, and that doesn't happen. So in those cases, the diabetes is not cured. So actually, there are treatments that lead to a cure, and there are treatments that do not lead to a cure. So those that lead to a cure, bariatric surgery, fasting, and very low-carb diets, and these treatments do not lead to a cure. Insulin, other drugs, a low-fat diet. You'll never guess, of course, which direction all our current treatment protocols and research are heading to. They're all heading towards the path of no cure. And that's why they tell you it's a chronic and progressive disease. But it's not. This is amazing news. This is amazing. Because type 2 diabetes is, in fact, a curable and reversible disease. The fact that treatments exist means that there is hope.
for all of us. Drugs, however, cannot cure a dietary disease. The cure must be a diet, the right diet. How can we burn fat? Well, that's what we all want to do. Imagine that we can somehow manipulate our meals so that we can maximize fat burning. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we have to understand what happens to our physiology when we eat. So when we eat food, the hormone insulin starts to rise. And insulin is a storage hormone. It stores some of this energy in our livers and in our fat cells. So sugar gets stored in the liver as glycogen, and fat gets stored as well. When we stop eating, the insulin levels start to fall, and what happens is that we start to bring this energy back out. So that when we're fasting, usually during sleeping for instance, we don't have to constantly eat to feed ourselves because we're generating this energy from the fuel that we've stored away. And this is a normal situation. So you eat, energy gets stored, as you don't eat, the energy comes back out. Now there are two main fuel sources for the body. The body can uh, burn sugar and the body can burn fat. And you have to understand that the body can switch from one to the other without any problems. This is a normal situation. Sugar is like the money in your wallet. It's easily available, but you can only store a certain limited amount. So you can take it in, you can take it out. It's very easy for the tissues to use. Fat, on the other hand, is like the money in your bank. There's an unlimited amount of storage, but it's not so easy to get to. You have to go to the teller. It's not immediately available to you like the money in your wallet. And this really explains partially why it's so hard to burn fat, because it's not that accessible to you. In fact, you can only get at it after you've burned through all the sugar, because your body is not going to bother of getting the energy from the fat when it has plenty of sugar. Let's look at what happens to the body when you start fasting. If you look at this graph, what it shows you is that where the body is getting its energy from. That's the oxidation rate on the left-hand side. So immediately when you stop eating, what you see is that the body is deriving most of its energy from carbohydrates, that's sugar. And as you, the immediate part after fasting, you can see that most of the energy is still derived from sugar. But after about 24 hours or so, those stores start to run out. The glycogen, which is the stored sugar, is starting to run out. And as you stop getting energy from your sugar, then you can see the green line, which is the, fats, the fat burning, starts to ramp up. What you see in essence is a switch here from burning sugar to burning fat. At no time do you see the protein really become a major problem. We're not burning protein for fuel. Protein is what we want our muscles, our tissues to be made out of. It's important. And you see that the body conserves the protein through the entire process. We're not burning muscle, we're burning fat. So what we're really talking about is how to switch over from burning sugar to burning fat. How do you do this? Well, a low carbohydrate, high fat diet is going to prevent the sugar from being stored in the first place. So if there's no sugar being stored, your body is naturally going to be able to go to the fat. But what happens if you have a lot of sugar stored already? Well, fasting is a great way to burn down all this sugar. Once you burn down all this sugar, then you can start burning fat. You want to start fasting. That's terrific. In this short video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to get started. It's terrifically simple. Almost everybody can benefit from fasting, but there are a few exceptions. It's not recommended for children, pregnant or breastfeeding women, those severely underweight or malnourished should not fast. If you're taking medications, especially if you're taking insulin or diabetic medications, you can still fast, but you need to make sure you clear it with your physician first. And that's it. Everybody else can get started right away. There's lots of different ways to fast. But here's the best way to get started. This is the 24-hour fasting period from dinner on day one to dinner on day two. So after you finish your dinner, don't eat anything else, no snacks, just go to sleep. And start the next morning with a glass of cold water or a nice cup of hot coffee. And then go to work and pretend like nothing's happening. At lunchtime, you might get hungry. 
you got to expect that, but it does get easier with time. You might want to get some green tea or coffee. By the time you finish it, the hunger will have passed. If colleagues ask you out to lunch, well, you can just tell them that you're working and you can join them tomorrow. Or you can join them for a coffee break. That's fine. Stay busy throughout the day and plan your fasting days for your busiest days at work. It really helps pass the time. When you get home, start preparing dinner and avoid the temptation to eat a little something first. At dinner, follow a low carbohydrate, high fat diet for maximum effect and add lots of natural fats. That's it. That's a 24 hour fast. It's so simple. How often should you do it? I recommend you do it twice a week.